How are you YouTube world? Welcome back to the workshop. What I'm going to do for you this week is I'm going to try on this bowl. This piece of beach, sported. Uh, you may remember a couple of weeks ago I made this rather unusual shaped, I don't know whether you call that a bowl or a vase, but that was growing off, it was a branch, it was growing off the side of the tree like that, um, and I trimmed up the top and I just sliced it off the main part of the tree and that was what was left. I was going to chuck it in the firewood pile, but when I saw the beautiful grain running through there, I decided to try and do something with it. And I do quite like that. I think that's quite nice. And there was some beautiful grain running through. So the same piece of wood that it came from was this. And you can see that lovely grain pattern in there. Just running through there, that's lovely. It really is nice. So, this is what I'm going to do today. Hope you enjoy it. And as you can see on this beach, there's some beautiful grain pattern running through there. Starting to sport down on that side. And you'll see all the sporting starting to happen on that side. So the first thing I need to do is get that on the bandsaw and cut it into a circular shape. So there we have a piece of each. I put that on the bandsaw, cut it circular. I've got my screwdriver in the other end. So we'll turn that down, see what we end up with. As you can see from there, I've got quite a lot more wood there than I have there. So all of that is going to be taken away first. And that's going to take me quite a while to do that. So as you can see, I've roughed this down, I've pulled the bottom off, I've left myself a tenon on the bottom for my jaw, so that when I turn that around to hollow it in a minute. And you can also see in there, this beautiful grain pattern running through there. Now once that's all sanded down and all cleaned up, that really should look quite nice. What I want to do is just leave a small rim on the outside of there and make sure that this is all below that level so that when it sits down it will sit down nice and flat on a table or sideboard. So the first thing we do is we'll take that away. So that's going to be our rim there. Three foot steel ruler. I'll just put that across there, and I can see from the way that's rocking. I need to take a little bit more off of there. Now I've got the bottom, bottom all nice and flat and square. I've got a nice tenon on there for me to turn around in the hole of the inside. I've also got a nice rim, nice flat rim on that wall. So what I need to do now is just do a clean up cut on this edge. I already roughed it down to pretty much. I would have liked it more squarer, but I'd end up losing quite a bit of the bowl. So I think it'll, I'll leave it as a bit of a bowl shape and I'll just clean this up. That's beautiful. Lovely finish on there. You've seen there, I've had that, that wood boring beetle in there. And that one. I'll have to go through and fill those. And I certainly need to go and check the rest of my wood pile as well. Alright, so I've got a few cracks in there. I'll fill those holes. I've got a few cracks in there that need to fill in. And then I'll just sand all that down. Oh, so it'll turn down, it's sanded down to 600, 400 rather. Uh, I'll address those holes. Quite a big split in there, that's covered that up a lot better than those other two. Let's put some sand and sealer on there.
That's brought that grain out there, beautiful. Looks lovely. Beautiful. Get some polish on there. I've said about this tin before. Uh, <coughs> when I thought that, when I thought I first bought this, Hampshire Sheen, I thought it was quite expensive for what it was. It's quite a small tin. I always used to use a chestnut wax 22. Previous to that, which is quite a big tin for the same price. Probably at least twice, if not three times your main. But when I bought this, I wrote the date on the back of there 6th of June 1920. And I do a lot of wood turning. 17 months I've had that tin. Then we last scrapings. £10 for 17 months ain't bad. Beautiful shine come on that already. So I've finished the back, finished the sides, and now all that's left is to hollow the bowl. Continue to hollow the bowl. This is about three times normal speed, and you can have a close up look at the bowl gouge in action. This is always quite an enjoyable piece for a wood turner. Oh, I find it so. You turn a lot of wood away very quickly, seeing chippings come flying. It's very satisfactory. So at the moment I'm just using a series of push strokes, just working my way hollow into the bowl. And then what I'm doing there is I'm leaving some of the wood in the middle of the bowl and I'm taking the outside down as far as I can. The problem is with a bowl this size the wood will flex, it will move um, and it will move away from your tool if there's nothing left to support it. So what I'm going to do is leave a bit of wood in the middle, just give it a bit of integral strength and then just take the outside down. Because you want to get quite a thin wall and there's not an awful lot of support in that as you're cutting it. So I'm just feeling that with my fingers, just seeing how far I've got to go, how thick that slur is and where the wood needs to come away from. So I'm just taking some of the centre away now because I'm getting down to, almost down to the depth that I need. So just adjusting the tool rest so I can get in there easier. And then just continue to gradually work away, taking that wood away. I say that when you're using a chisel you should have three points of contact. So you should have the bevel of the chisel, it's that sloping bit coming back off there, that's your cutting edge. You should have it on the tool rest, and you should have the handle in your hand pushed up against your side. Pushed up against your side there, so that anchors it. So when you cut, you don't move the chisel around, what you do is you move your body, so you keep that anchored you keep that end anchored up against your side and you move your body. Now when I come in across the bottom of there, that angle is too steep for me to rub along the bottom. I can't get in there. So what I have is another chisel and if you look at that, 
I've ground that back to a completely different angle which allows me to go straight along the bottom of that bowl and still rest the bevel on the wood. That allows me to rub that bevel across the bottom of there, giving me a really good finish. Nice flat, nice and smooth. So all I've got to do now is to just go in and just sand that up. And because that's so flat and smooth, it'll only take me a couple of minutes just to sand that down. I'll come back to you when I've done it. All done. Beautiful finish in there. Well, there we go, YouTubers. Another one off the production line. Just a simple bowl. And I've tried to keep those sides as straight as I can just to show off that beautiful grain pattern in there. This dark brown it's what beach ordinary beach but all of that is all sported along there and there you see that beautiful grain pattern running through there I would seem almost a shame if it's thin in there I think that's beautiful I really do like that I've said in some of my other videos before, that is what we turn wood for. I mean, that is absolutely beautiful. It really is lovely. From a log to that in about two hours, that could sit on somebody's sideboard for the next 20, 30, 40 years. It really is beautiful. I really like that. So, thank you very much for watching the video. As always, I've been Steve Howe, and this really has been an enjoyable day at a more workshop. I've really enjoyed that. I do like that very much. Thank you and goodbye. I will put some stills of the bowl up afterwards, but I would say if you've enjoyed watching this, please hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, make an old man happy. Thank you.